is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold penny i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 lexus es 250 courtesy of bobby ray hall lexus in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i am quite excited to be in this one today this is an incredibly reliable sedan and actually my dad's last vehicle was an es he took it over 200,000 miles before actually trading it in so that is proof right there if you needed it but one major change for the 2021 model year i'm just going to give it to you guys right now all-wheel drive does now come standard on every single trim level of the es which is a brilliant thing here in pennsylvania because we do actually get snow quite often here so that is very much a good thing and it smells like a chlorinated hotel pool in here right now because we just took it through the car wash so for that reason alone i'm quite excited to be in this one but in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one including acceleration braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip and everything else of course so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2021 lexus es first one being the base trim starting at forty thousand dollars even then there is the f sport starting at forty five thousand eight hundred dollars luxury which actually is the one we have today starting at forty five thousand two hundred and the ultra luxury starting at forty nine thousand dollars even but so having said that regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the es 250 will be the same powering this one is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 203 horsepower at 6500 rpm 184 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will of course be testing out in a little bit here zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 8.6 seconds top speed 131 miles per hour and mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 34 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so now before we do this paddle shifter test i did want to mention there are of course or some drive modes that come standard on the ES. The drive mode button is located just above the gauge is there and to the right. So the way that works, if you want it in sport driving mode, you turn it up. If you want it in eco driving mode, you turn it down. And if you want to put it back to normal, you simply just press in on that button. That is how you're going to go ahead and adjust those drive modes. But I will say it will adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, and actually the colors on the gauges as well, which is my personal favorite. I think that's pretty darn cool. So just put it in sport mode, a lot of red and white hues. If you put it back to normal, you got the black. And then if you put it in eco, you got some blue hues so that is pretty darn cool i like that but anyways now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the paddle shifters to the test here first i'm going to push the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is going to give me full control over the shifting and is also going to tell me what gear i'm in up on the digital portion of the gauges and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right you guys here is our paddle shifter test as i'm getting onto this straightaway Actually, not bad. I mean, it's not the quickest acceleration in the world, but the paddle shifters are actually quite quick and they have a very high quality feel to them as well. So feel aluminum actually. So very nice quality on the paddle shifters. Also, I love the fact that they do actually react quite quickly as well. So Lexus, well done with the paddle shifters. I'm now going to get back full control to the ES here. I'm just gonna slide the shifter back to the right. And now let's go ahead and find that straight away again. Let's do a quick little acceleration test here with the car having full control. Let's see how quickly this ES here can get us up to speed. Off we go. You know what? It's not bad. Not the quickest thing in the world, of course, but it's not bad. I will say that. It's pretty much as expected. You're not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway, but would have liked to have seen a little bit more when it comes to that acceleration. But then again, it wouldn't be as reliable, I think, if they were to have turbocharged that engine configuration or something like that. So we'll say the acceleration isn't bad, but it's certainly not the quickest thing in the world. But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.1-inch solid rear 
rear discs, as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at 125 feet, which is pretty respectable. Um, certainly not bad for as much power as this thing has, I will say that. As far as the braking feel goes, absolutely no issues there. There's no dead spots in the braking, or it's not squishy or spongy or anything like that. So braking feel is perfectly fine here in our ES. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, gas pressurized shock absorbers as well. Did want to also mention though, if you were to go with the F Sport trim level or ultra luxury trim level, you will get lateral performance dampers. And that is definitely something I would probably recommend because that is kind of going to give you the best of both worlds. It's not only going to tighten up the suspension during heavy cornering, but it is going to read the roads imperfections and give you a much smoother ride then as well. So if you wanted a smoother ride, definitely go with one of those two trim levels because that is how you're going to go ahead and get it. But having said that, I will say say the ride quality really isn't all that bad in our luxury trim level that we have today so we don't have the performance dampers but still ride quality is perfectly acceptable i haven't had any issues with the ride quality at least in my short test drive here today i will say that as far as steering feel goes again i'm actually pleasantly surprised and maybe it's because i have it in sport driving mode right now but it is a much heavier feel to the steering maybe because of that but let me go ahead and put it back in normal driving mode here and it's still actually a little bit more on the heavier side so really I don't mind it. Either way that you go with, the steering feel feels right in the ES. I will say that not as heavy as the IS350 I recently drove. I loved that steering feel. It's one of the best steering feels I've felt in a long time, actually. But this ES definitely does it very well as well. So <laughs> I will say that. But anyways, touching on cabin noise, perfectly fine. This is a Lexus. It's to be expected. There's not a whole lot of exterior wind noise at all coming into the cabin. So that is definitely quite nice. Touching on visibility, this is a very nice shaped sedan. So I can see perfectly fine out the back. So definitely no issues there either. And for every single trim level but the base trim, you will actually also get rain sensing windshield wipers as well. So that means whenever the ES detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers. So essentially it's just one less thing you gotta worry about. So that's a big plus there as well. And in addition to that, I do wanna mention, there is a head up display that is optional on all trim levels. It does not come standard on any particular trim level, but it is an option and I wanted to mention it because we do have that here today. So I'm looking at right now the speed limit of the current road I'm on. I'm looking at my current speed and there is going to be some safety features displayed up on my windshield as well. So it better helps me keep my eyes on the road so I can better enjoy the drive here in our ES250. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 Lexus ES250. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Lexus ES250, finished in eminent white pearl, which is an added paint option, by the way. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Of course, you have that iconic Lexus spindle front grille to the sides. LED headlights do come standard across the board. Automatic feature, of course, coming with that as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard to the bottom corners. Then below the headlights, you will find front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there. There will be a unique gloss black front grille for the F Sport trim level specifically. And since we have the luxury, I can't show that to you guys right now, but I did want to mention it. Then another feature I wanted to mention up front here, because we actually have a different headlight setup. This is the triple beam LED headlight package. This goes for $1,515. And that of course will give you a little better illumination at night as well. And it looks dang cool up there as well. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the ES250 here. And so now since we we are around to the side of the ES. Chrome window surrounds do come standard. You will get some F Sport badging if you were to go with the F Sport trim level, of course. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are power adjustable body colored side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turret signals then as well. And then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch 10 spoke alloys coming with the base, 18 inch 10 spoke alloys coming with the luxury. Although we do have an optional wheel package today, we actually have the 18 inch multi-spoke noise reduction alloy wheels. Believe it or not, that is a thing. These wheels are actually going to reduce noise. So 
that is pretty interesting to me. 19 inch split five spoke alloys coming with the F Sport and 18 inch split five spoke alloys coming with the Ultra Luxury then. So overall a very nice side profile to this thing in my personal opinion, but now Let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the ES250. And so now since we are around back, first thing I wanted to mention is there is a rear spoiler on our ES250. That is an optional thing that we do have specifically for the luxury trim level here. However, if you were to go with F Sport, that actually does come standard with a rear spoiler. So looking something like we have right now, LED tail lights do come standard back there as well. And just below it all, there actually is a single exhaust outlet tucked away. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So but now since we are around back of the ES, there are a few different ways to go ahead and open that rear trunk. There is a button on the key fob, that is one way. There is also a button on the trunk itself and there is a button by the driver's side left knee as well. And I did want to mention for the ultra luxury trim level and as an added option for our luxury that we have today, there is a power trunk with the kick sensor. That is going to be actually what we have here today. So that is going to be available for you as well if you did want a power trunk. But once opened up, car capacity comes comes in at 16.7 cubic feet. There was actually some tie down anchors back there as well as grocery bag hooks, which you typically don't find on sedans, you find them on SUVs. So was kind of pleasantly surprised to find that they were back there. Also some LED cargo lighting and there is a spare tire underneath the cargo floor as well. But then make our way to the rear leg room that comes in at 39.2 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Did want to also mention for the rear passengers, there is rear ventilation there is a rear center armrest with cup holders and there is a power rear sunshade if you were to go with the luxury trim level and rear side window sunshades if you were to go with the ultra luxury so we don't have any of that today but what we do have is a lot of charging ports I will say that there are actually dual USB charging ports in the back there and one 12 volt power outlet a lot of times with a lot of sedans you'll see one USB charging port sometimes you'll see two but it's very rare you're going to get two USB charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet as well so well done Lexus if you got kids in the back they're definitely going to stay charged up but then make our way to the front seats 10 way power adjustable front seats do come standard even with the base trim level and that is going to come with a new Lux finish F Sport trim level is going to add to that heated and ventilated front seats F Sport bolstered seats as well which by the way are the most comfortable seats in existence although we don't have it today but I did want to mention that to you guys these seats are plenty comfortable but the F Sport goes above and beyond literally every single other vehicle I have ever tested so I wanted to mention that to you guys memory settings also come with the F Sport trim level and up luxury trim is going to add to that a perforated leather which is what we have today and a 14 way power adjustable driver seat as well and again seats are plenty comfortable either route you go it's just the F Sports are the best but then take a look at the steering wheel this tilt and telescoping it is power adjustable for the F Sport trim level and up it will be leather wrapped for every single trim level and it will be heated with some wood grain accents if you were to go with the ultra luxury although that is an option for our luxury trim that we have today so therefore that is what you guys are looking at but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here because it is a pretty heavy duty key i like the design here lexus logo on the one side all of your buttons are going to be located on the flip side though lock unlock and that button to pop the rear hatch it is however all keyless entry with a push button start so all i am going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there and so once started up, it is essentially all kind of a digital gauge cluster for the most part, which I kind of like. You can, of course, adjust what is on those digital gauges by using the steering wheel mounting control on the left side. As I said previously, when you adjust the drive mode, it is going to adjust the colors of those gauges, which is pretty cool. You got a digital speedometer front and center. You got the tachometer surrounding that, of course. You can check out your miles per gallon at any given time, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There is a compass up there, radio information, safety information when you need your next oil change and the list goes on. So basically everything you could possibly want up on the gauges there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power moonroof is actually coming standard for every single trim level. You gotta love that. 
dual zone climate control also standard for every single trim level i gotta say i like the design that they did behind the dual zone climate control i will say that i mean it does feel plastic of course but like i say with all of my other reviews if you're going to do plastic at least give it a nice design and that is what lexus did so that is pretty cool i like it well done lexus for that wood trim is going to come with the luxury trim level that we of course have today ambient lighting is going to come with the luxury and ultra luxury trim level so overall it's finished pretty much like a lexus should be it's absolutely high quality materials everywhere you look there is soft touch material with contrast stitching just above the passenger side glove box like i said even with the plastics it's like high quality plastics because there's design to it even with the center armrest you guys can see the design maybe you can't maybe you can but there is a design to the center armrest as well which is pretty cool and by the way within the center armrest there is a wireless phone charger which is an added option but we do have that as well and a decent amount of storage in there and a 12 volt power outlet is actually in there as well there is an adjustable cup holder here just in front of that there is also dual usb charging ports auxiliary port and yet another cup holder as well in front of the shifter there is actually what also appears to be a cd player that's different haven't seen those in quite a while but that is available just in front of the shifter there as well and like i said overall interior quality is amazing there's an auto dimming rear view mirror here with home link controls for up to three different garage doors don't want to forget to mention that either and i love the contrast between the light and the dark leather and the wood trim that we have here in our particular es here today but anyway so let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display because it is going to differ depending on which configuration that you go with so there is an eight inch color touchscreen display that comes standard on the base f sport and luxury trim however ultra luxury is going to bump that up to a 12.3 inch high resolution display screen it is not touch screen though so i did want to mention that but all of your buttons in the mouse pad controller is going to be located just to the right of the shifter that is how you're going to go ahead and control that and I say that because that is the one we have today. It's actually an option here for our luxury trim, but either way you can check out Bluetooth and audio streaming. Either way, you still get Amazon Alexa compatibility. You still have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, just hook it up to the ES and you have free navigation displayed upon that tech display. Factory navigation system is going to come with the ultra luxury. It is available for some of the other trim levels. You can of course check out your climate control information up there as well, along with some of your driving statistics and of course your radio information. And so this is one of my favorite parts because there are a couple different sound systems available for this one but the good one is the one we have today not that the other one's bad but 10 speakers actually do come standard across the board for every single trim level but there is an optional mark levinson surround sound system with 17 speakers and get ready for it 1800 watts that is insane a lot of optional sound systems will come with 1200 1400 1800 is pretty ridiculous and that is the one we have today so by the way that goes for $2,900 that's a Mark Levinson and navigation package combined so $2,900 is how much that one is going to cost but let's go ahead and turn the radio here see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one I didn't want to turn it off that pretty much says it right there that sound system was amazing no matter what you listen to you can listen to the worst song with no bass with nothing in it and it would still sound amazing on this mark levinson surround sound system that is why i wanted to emphasize that because the mark levinson system with any lexus especially the es with 1800 watts it's brilliant it is brilliant it is among the best for sure that was an amazing sound system i'm just going to put it that way but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put this one in reverse you of course will find a rear view camera with a couple different angles actually letting you know who or what is behind you and i did want to also mention ultra luxury trim level is going to give you a panoramic view monitor as well which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start iihs top safety pick plus which pretty much says it all right there that is the very highest designation given by iihs front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system that's all boring at this point but also coming 
extended across the board will be Lexus Safety System 2.0 Plus, which includes pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane tracing assist, lane departure alert with steering assist, road sign assist, dynamic radar cruise control, and automatic high beams as well. And then if you were to go with the F Sport trim level now, you're also going to get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And so all in all, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the ES250, I love that it now has all-wheel drive. It's always a big selling point for me personally living in Pennsylvania. We get quite a bit of snow. And if you don't have all-wheel drive, inevitably at some point or another, you're either going to slip, end up in a ditch, or end up stuck somewhere. So that is why all-wheel drive is a big deal to me. S-Sport seats are the very best seating out there right now. Without a doubt, I've driven 550-ish cars at this point, car trucks, SUVs. F-Sport seats are still my favorite to this day. So if you have the opportunity and maybe you have a bad back, those F-Sport seats are gonna be where it's at. Unbeatable reliability as well. You can't go wrong with really any Lexus. And since this is essentially the fancy version of the Toyota Camry, you guys know, this is definitely an extremely reliable vehicle. Stellar safety as well. I mentioned to you guys, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. So essentially this vehicle does everything right where it matters most, like safety, like reliability, like seat comfort, all wheel drive. So those are definitely big selling points. As far as constructive criticism goes that I got, I like the gauges, but I think maybe a larger digital gauge cluster would be pretty cool, like a 12.3 inch, which is what a lot of other manufacturers are doing these days, like Mercedes-Benz and BMW, Hyundai, Mitsubishi, Kia, I probably go on and on, but that is kind of the trend at this point, and it is the trend because it is completely customizable. You can essentially change the look or whatever to make it your own. Multicolor ambient lighting I think would be pretty cool in this one as well. And maybe I missed it on this next one, but rear heated seats I think would go pretty darn good with the ES as well, especially as much luxury as the ES currently has here, and it has a dang lot. I feel like that is just one thing that's kind of missing with the ES is rear heated seats. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember seeing on Lexus's website that they were available, but anyways. That about rounds off this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.